Hello, my name is Tara Kachaturoff, and I'm the host of Michigan Entrepreneur, where we feature businesses from startup to stellar. Today we have as our special guest, Jim Cash, president of Revel Custom Wine Cellars. Welcome to the program. Thank you, good morning. Well, I'm really excited to have you on the program today because we're gonna talk about a really unique business, the unique business of creating and designing wine cellars. But before mm -hmm. we jump into what you do in this amazing business, and we have some pictures to show a little bit later, why don't you tell me about your background and how you got started with this business? Okay, I have been in the commercial construction and real estate development business for the last 21 years. And uh, when I had an opportunity, I've been a lifelong wine appreciator and collector. And so uh, when I finally reached a point in my life when I was ready to uh, invest in my own wine cellar, my background in real estate and construction caused me to, to be very meticulous about my planning. And there was a specific type of um, wine cellar that I had in mind, and my plan was to just go find one and buy it. And when I went to find what I was looking for, I found that there wasn't one on the market. Uh, I had the traditional wine rack before with the little cubicles with the neck sticking out. And mm -hmm. I hated trying to find a bottle of wine that I was a specific bottle of wine because I'd end up pulling, pulling them out and turning them around <laughs> and going through that process. It was very frustrating. So I said, I just want a uh, drawer that has you know four or five of these that, that I can slide out and, and look at. And then I said, well, if I had the, a, a drawer like that, then the, the bottles wouldn't have to be upside down. They could be oriented so I could read the labels and that would really speed up my, save me a lot of time. And so that's kind of how it all started and one thing led to another and I, um, developed a number of different design concepts and friends and neighbors really loved it and thought it looked really cool and so then I uh, went through a process of patenting the designs and, and that was successful and uh, so now we have a number of patents and um, so it we all started came, selling them. So it all came about because you had a problem and you couldn't find a solution, so now you've started a company that provides those solutions. That's exactly right. It's the, and that's how many, many it's entrepreneurs get started that way. Sure. <laughs> it's a fantastic thing. Now, rather than keep everybody in, uh, you know, wondering about what these sellers look like, um, we're going to take a look at some of the work that you've done and mm -hmm. we can go through these photos. Um, we've had about a, a dozen or so okay. and um, you can tell me a, a couple things about each uh, photo as we go through them. So um, we have one that we're looking at here. Can you tell us a little okay. bit about this one? There's I love one. this design. That one is located in Washington DC. So you're doing business outside of Michigan. Oh, we've sent sellers uh, as far away as uh, London, England. Wow, fantastic. Put it on a shipping container and oh my send goodness. it across the ocean. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is so, lovely. So uh, this is about a 2,000 bottle wine cellar. And uh, uh, this cellar here is actually on the 43rd floor of a high rise in Chicago. Is this in a, somebody's, this is somebody's in home? somebody's home. That's a, he actually has a two-story wine cellar. This is one story. Now, where the wine bottles are, does that rotate? Do those rotate? The, the, yes, in the center is the Lazy Susan that I spoke of okay. earlier. And, oh, and I see uh, the dowels. So and the light so you can see how the dowels rest. And we'll have some pictures later that show that in a little more detail. But uh, yes, this is a, 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 there are Lazy Susans in the rear corners on, on both the left and right there oh, as well. Oh, I see. Uh, and those are all drawers cellar. that can be pulled out then? All those of the vertical drawers. elements are, are slide out drawers. This is a, uh, a modern design um, and this is uh, what we call a reach-in cellar rather than a walk-in cellar. A lot of people like to entertain and uh, dine uh, mm -hmm. in their cellars, but a uh, wine cellar is a very uncomfortable environment. <laughs> it's 55 degrees and 70% <laughs> right. humidity. So. Uh, this particular client uh, wanted to have uh, uh, entertainment area adjacent to his wine cellar and had space only for, um, not for both. So mm -hmm. uh, 
the cooling and uh, the, the wine storage is behind those doors and you don't actually walk in, you reach in to pull out the drawers. I see. And you and where could was, walk in. Where was this, is this a Michigan based uh, wine cellar or where is this one? This one is on Lake Michigan, on Lake and Michigan. it's a uh, uh, very highly acclaimed uh, design. Uh, it's been featured in a number of magazines. It's beautiful. This was the very first uh, cellar that we installed. This is in Long Island, New York, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a beautiful cellar. It's gotten uh, published in a number of magazines. Uh, and it illustrates the, the concepts that we uh, have in the, the, what you can't see is in the wall that would be on this end mm -hmm. are two Lazy Susans. So we try to incorporate those in uh, all the cellars w that we do. And, and you can also see here that uh, our sliding drawers can accommodate individual bottles or cases. I see. So those cases are, those all pull out. Those are out. all slide are out all drawers as drawers. well. So we did a lot of uh, studying bottle geometry when we designed these as far bottle as... Bottle geometry. Uh, how and here you can really see those Lazy Susans. Those are, that's neat. I yes, love that. Yes, this is actually a very small cellar, but mm -hmm. it's quite efficient. It's got quite a bit of storage in it uh, for being so small, but uh, What's yes. What's the capacity, do you think, of this particular setup? That one's got about 700 bottles in it. 700? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. And you can see again the dowel structure for the Lazy Susan. This is, this is actually okay. my cellar at home. And the Lazy Susan in the corner there was the genesis of the idea on the Lazy Susan. Uh, I had uh, case storage on both mm -hmm. walls and then in the corner I found that on, when I laid it out on paper, I had a 32 inch hole where one mm -hmm. bank met the other. Right. And so I just thought about what they do in kitchen cabinetry, and they create Lazy Susans. And so I said to the guys, let's, let's do one of those. Now, these Lazy Susans come in different diameters? They're all the same. They're all the same. So mm -hmm. how many bottles would fit around approximately? 18 bottles, 18 bottles? per level. Per so level. They're, they're There's a lot. Uh, That's a lot. Mm -hmm. It is. It's, it's a very efficient use of space, and uh, people tremendous. love them. And, and these are just close-up photos that show down. that the drawers slide out and how we can uh, orient the bottles. Um, I love that. We can I make the that. drawers deeper um, to have a double, uh, double stacking. Okay. So if we want to get more density, that's one way we can do it. Beautiful. It's not <laughs> upside down. It's <laughs> actually the, showing a very uh, interesting feature with the dowel oh, construction. Oh, you can see it from upside down. Ah. When, the, when the shelves go all the way to the ceiling, you can right. orient the labels downwards. So oh, when you, you pull up, you can, can see it from see below. It. Oh my goodness. That was just a side benefit we really didn't even think about, but uh, that is unbelievable. it makes it so much easier to, to find and manage your collection. That is perfect. I thought that was upside down at first, <laughs> and it's not. And here we go again. Uh, similar, and this this is a shelves, shelves with the, the um, the with the bottles at an angle again. It and looks I a little distorted there. And I love how you're there, literally but. using every piece of space. Yes. It's just, yes. it's so, um, I love that conservation there. Well, it's capacity like is a big issue with, mm -hmm. with wine cellars, and, and generally you're trying to find a way to fit as many bottles as right. you can into a, a fairly small space. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I want to thank you so much for going through these photos with us. I mean, it's fascinating to see your uh, patented uh, design mm -hmm. and the functionality that you have with those shelves. I think it's beautiful. It's fantastic. What kind of vision do you have um, for where you want to take this company? Well, we're already global. We've shipped to Europe and Canada, mm -hmm. and so we're learning how uh, to do trade internationally. Mm -hmm. My background in commercial construction has given me um, a great network of designers and architects that we've worked with. Mm -hmm. And so um, my plan is to grow the business through the um, design uh, community that I know and uh, to also expand into the commercial side of things. Um, we, uh, I should say, we're going to do our first Michigan commercial installation in uh, Oakland County, in uh, oh, Rochester Hills. Oh, it's a new uh, 
very nice high-end French restaurant opening up called the Chapman House. And uh, so we're going to be putting an installation there uh, oh, that's very fantastic. soon. fantastic. So um, there's many, many ways to go. We can also expand, I guess you would call it uh, horizontally by incorporating um, the other seller components through either partnerships with um, technology companies that uh, specialize in control systems mm -hmm. and lighting, security, um, uh, with other vendors that uh, uh, market the cooling units and other components of wine cellars so because we can be more full service. Because you're focusing really on the, the construction of the, the cabinetry, the cabinetry. Alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's That's what a lot we've of, done so far. A so. lot of great opportunities for mm -hmm. partnering, and I'm sure they're just as excited mm -hmm. um, because they mm -hmm. obviously these folks have seen your work because sure, they're sure. all in the same network. We've also talked about and been asked to consider uh, wine acquisition for our clients when they have a brand new wine cellar. They've come mm -hmm. to us and said, Can "What do you I help fill me? It with? <laughs> uh, what should I buy? What what's collectible? What will what will appreciate in value? What will improve with age in the cellar?" So and what's so amazing is because that's your natural background. That's I mean, what I love. All, <laughs> I know it's like it doesn't get any better than this. You created right. a whole um, like a, a lifestyle business. Uh -huh. I mean, out of my passion. So. Out of your passion, and uh, you know. I, to me, that is such an exciting way to go into being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. um, because it's just a natural unfolding of who you are as a sure, person. Sure, sure. Uh, did you ever, um, I know because you, you have your own uh, company in the real estate um, commercial end of things, did you ever see yourself um, creating a, a, a business like this? I mean, I know you already are an entrepreneur, but mm -hmm. did you ever think you had that this would go this way or did you, did you ever have dreams of doing something like this in your life? I have ever since I was a kid. Really? Um, <laughs> I've come up with these uh, these ideas and and said to myself, I really should do something with this. And so there's a couple more ideas up there in my head that I'm uh, mulling. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, are it's they in the same of, space or a different space, a different niche? Uh, they're different. You'll have to definitely get in touch with me okay. <laughs> again when the next one comes out. Now, right. in terms of some of the things, and I, I know this probably isn't the place to be sharing those ideas, but um, do you have some other ideas and things that you um, design-wise that you uh, may be bringing to this to what you're already doing um, that are in your head in terms of uh, new constructions and new geometries that you might be using in this cabin tree going forward? I do. Um, and, and one of the things that I want Revel to be is an innovator. We mm -hmm. were, of course, formed out of an innovation, right. um, but we want to continue to develop new products. And uh, when we came up with this particular design and, and using a high quality mahogany, uh, naturally finished wood, um, we didn't really know, we thought, one of our biggest challenges would be that people wouldn't like the look of it. I mean, they were designed to function in a certain way, mm -hmm. and so it was a functional approach rather than an aesthetic that we were designing around. So now that we have them, um, what we're hearing from our client base is, could you do something that has the same function that has maybe a more modern look, maybe d with oh, steel and, mm -hmm. and uh, or acrylic materials, things like that, to, to, to fit into, you know, my, say, contemporary home. Right. So there's definitely so some innovation different, going on. We're working oh. on one right now with steel dowels instead of wood, oh, wow, and that's going to have a very, very different oh, look, uh, yeah. very streamlined, very, mm -hmm. very smooth. So there's a lot of different ways to go with it. Well, Jim, I think your, your um, whole story of how you started this business and what you've created and, and the internationalizing of it all is really fascinating. And I'm so happy that I was able to talk to you about this business and, and the fact that you're, you're kind of doing it part-time <laughs> in between <laughs> things by outsourcing everything, uh -huh. which is amazing. But uh -huh. it's so neat to uh, have this amazing example of taking your passion and turning it into um, something more to share with other people literally around the world. Mm -hmm. And my last question to you is, what's your advice to entrepreneurs? Because you've been living this lifestyle and you've done it and made it work and are continuing on that journey of yours, but what's your advice to entrepreneurs? Well, I, I'm not sure that the way that we did it is the way that it should be done, uh, but I, I do think the um, 
Uh, it's, it's safe to assume that everything that you want to do is going to be more challenging than you thought it might be. <laughs> right. Um, there, are, there are things to running a business, especially a small business, um, that, you, that the owner has to do. Uh, payroll and things like that, that uh, when we work in a company, we have people that do that. And then when you're all by yourself, you have to wear a lot of different hats. And so that's quite challenging. Well, I want to thank you so much for sharing your story of Revel Custom Wine Cellars, and I wish you very well as your business continues to grow and expand and, uh, of course, serving the needs of your clientele around the world. Thanks so much for sharing the story. Okay, thank you. Pleasure to be here. If you'd like more information about our program, please visit us at www.michigananteprenuertv.com. Please join me again in the future when I interview another enterprising entrepreneur.